TVS's IQ, it's got to be gritty because its family is filled with siblings who make for excellent class A type of scooters. Every one of them, the Antog, the Jupiter, the Zest. So yeah, it's gonna live up to all of those and it also has the task of taking TVS Motor Company into an increasingly electric future. No pressure, huh? But if I was the TVS iCube, I'd be honestly sweating a bit right about now because after years of being readied and made behind closed doors in utter secrecy, you step out into the light that is cast upon you by the sharp and strong competition, at least on paper, it just ends up feeling that the iCube is walking a middle ground of sorts, which isn't great to start off with, right? But that's on paper. We would have liked to test it out on the chaotic roads of Bangalore where TVS also has 10 charging stations and that would have been the home environment for the IQ, right? But instead, we are here at TVS's factory in Hosur at the test track. The perfect place to put a bunch of very mature human beings on an electric commuter scooter to test it out. What's gonna happen? Physical fitness, that's going to be the first test we're going to throw at the TVS IQ as it tries to prove that it can be a class leader like its siblings. So at the heart of the matter is a 3 kilowatt electric motor in the hub of the rear wheel which can deliver about 0 to 40 acceleration in 4.2 seconds and a top speed of 78 kilometers an hour. Which means nothing if it doesn't feel good and fun to ride. As is often the case, specs tell only half the story because the iCube on the road felt really good to ride. Now, as you would expect with an electric, twist the throttle at standstill and you get an instant surge. But the really impressive bit is even as you get closer to the top speed above 70 km an hour, the power doesn't trail off. The peak performance that you're getting from the motor is sustained for over 60 seconds. That's a solid shove that you get and very handy at that. And even when you're in eco mode, you won't find that the torque responsiveness is dull where it feels annoying to use. In fact, it feels very usable with speed just being capped and power trailing off when you get past 40 kilometers an hour. The other two big surprises for me on the IQ, first and foremost, the smoothness. This is absolutely clean. There are no vibes, nothing at all. It's impressive considering that we were pushing it hard a lot. And along with that is the silence. There is no whine, no hum, nothing. This is just incredibly quiet. And these two benefits are because of that rather different but rather handy hub motor that the iCube has on it. So the iCube has aced the physical test, but what about chemistry? Well, it's packing lithium iron, three of these battery packs in fact, which are being made in-house by TVS at Hosur. The cells of course are not. What you get from these batteries is 2.25 kilowatt hours of storage, which TVS claims results in about 75 kilometers of range when you're in the eco mode and 55 kilometers when you're in sport mode. Now, we were acting like complete idiots out on the track, as you would expect, and the results for us were surprising. Over some tested range where we were going hard on in terms of acceleration out on the track and riding pretty much non-stop with very little region, we saw the state of charge dropping by about 36% while covering 15 to 17 kilometers. Which means that the range projected by TVS is extremely realistic. We would expect in sport mode with a full charge for you to be able to cover at least 60 kilometers. The chemistry exam, the IQ has cleared easily, but not exactly with flying colors, which takes us to the next test, which is physics. Now, in terms of curve weight, the IQ is about 10 kilograms heavier than the Jupiter, but the seat height is 770 millimeters, which is about five mm more than the Jupiter. 
ground clearance is still healthy at 157 mm so that is sounding good but there is one complication and that is the electric motor which is sitting all the way back here on the rear wheel which means unsprung mass and because of this unsprung mass it's using two shock absorbers and of course it has a dual sided swing arm so how does it all add up first the additional weight it's not apparent and when you tip it into corners it's definitely not apparent then because it just feels light and eager to turn in very well TVS scooter type I would say surprising again and then there's the suspension which actually works as it should despite the added weight despite well the electric nature of it with the motor sitting back here it just feels confident and composed even of the bumps at high speeds when we were leaned over into the corner and that promises to offer a good amount of comfort on road we even rode it over some rough sections over here and it worked well through those as well of course there's that little bit of a bounciness you should get on most scooters Since the iCube is available only in one variant with a combi brake system, disc at the front and drum at the rear, it is quite a potent combination offering you good consistent stopping power and you could use just the front brake for ultra strong braking but of course since there's no ABS you need to take extra care with that. But on the whole it's delivered better than we expected on this front. So the physics test is definitely a clear one from me as well. Next up, arts and crafts. And this is where the iCube starts running into a little bit of, hmm, trouble. Because this design is, well, not really cutting edge when you think about an electric scooter, right? Think of the Jupiter from 10 years into the future and that's what the IQ really feels like in the flesh. Don't get me wrong, I really love the headlamp and tail lamp treatment, but it could have been more exciting to appeal to, well, maybe younger audiences. But the thing is, this is meant to be a family scooter and for which it does have a fair amount of practicality. For instance, under seat, you have 21 liters of storage and along with that, you have a USB charging port, you have a light for your storage area. And along with that, you also have a slot here, which is basically the keyhole to open up the storage here for the battery pack, which is really of no use to you because the batteries are not removable for you to go and charge at home. But when it comes to craftiness, the IQ is a bit of a mixed bag. For instance, this, the startup sound reminds me of a water purifier. That should be better. And coming to the other crafty bit, which actually works, is the screen here, which is a color TFT display, which is really sharp, really legible, even in bright sunlight. Gives you all the information, whether it's connectivity from your phone, the app on it, and so whether it's calls that you're getting or messages, you can see the statuses of all of that on the screen without responding to them actively while riding. And uh, of course, the display also helps you see the modes you're in and all of that, the range, the state of charge. The Q Assist mode makes it really easy to switch between reverse and forward which makes maneuvering and parking, even on inclines, really easy. So that is definitely handy, but in terms of craftiness, the IQ could have done better. For instance, the Chetak has a keyless go system, the Aether 450 that has a touch screen. So yeah. Those would have added to the wow elements of the IQ. But what would have really, really helped is the switch gear being better. Right now, in terms of design, they're very chunky, the switches on it, and quite mushy to use. So when it comes to arts and crafts, the IQ is... Um, pass. Now, the IQ on paper had us a bit concerned but because this is a TVS we came in to this ride with big expectations and the iCube has delivered because it has proved to be a properly solid scooter just like the petrol powered ones from TVS. This is peppy, it is refined, really refined, smooth, comfortable, confident and practical. 
The, it's got a couple of issues maybe in terms of, you know, for taller riders, the clearance from the bars or, you know, the quality of the switches and a little bit of the fit and finish. But that aside, this is a solid and potent scooter and which is priced to go head to head with the other competition in the market. You might think that we missed out on charging, right? Yeah, we have. In this video, but we made a separate video because that is a big subject and we've tackled it separately. Stay tuned to Zigwheels, watch that video if you're looking to buy the iQ, which for now is available only in Bangalore, but will be available in another two cities by the middle of 2020 with others to follow shortly after. What do you think about the iQ? Let us know in the comments. What could it have done better? We'd love to hear from you.